I would like to welcome uh, my friend Stoney McDonald from Animal Equipment from Stoney. Uh, he has some really exciting news to share with us. Uh, Stoney, it's been a while since we talked, though. Uh, you know, you got this new hook and stuff. I just want to hear all about it. Oh, I, I'll tell you, wild man. <clears throat> I um, uh, the the first drawings and stuff that we started doing was back in um, uh, 2015. So we got six years worth of testing this and trying that and and going over because when I try to make a product that's already out there, I want to set the bar higher if I can. And this hook here, I believe I have done that this time uh, because I have addressed so many of the different issues that everybody always talked about. Um, To start with, we made sure we used a a quarter-inch titanium for the hook part. I, I just don't like the stainless and the aluminum myself. You know, other people are fine with it, but to me, I, I go with that. Um, all sections are an extremely thick walled anodized aluminum, but it has three sections or three areas that has a groove that goes around. And then in that groove is four little dimples. And the plastic insert collet has the fingers that go out, and it has the little uh, uh, nipples that will fit into that. So when you pull it out, it hits the grooves, uh, tighten the collet a little bit, and as you twist it, you'll feel it fit into them holes, and then you tighten your collet down. It stops the hooks from rotating, and that's a real big one for most people. Um, But uh, the, the video that we did this past weekend I have an old style type scale, and I started off with the hook fully open. I lifted a five-pound weight off of it, showing that it was actually weighing the five pounds. When I pressed down on it using the full length of the hook uh, to show that it could be used if you had to pin or if you, you used it like a walking stick or something, we sent it well past 55 pounds of pushing down. On that scale, oh, wow. and that took a oh, wow. lot of. Uh, let me tell you something. It took a lot of strength to get it to that point there. And um, uh, it has a, a second area that you can shorten the uh, the first section up, and just use the the middle and the back half, which will give you 33 inches instead of the full 44 inches, which is real nice. Um, and then of course. You uh, being very tight uh, tolerances with this, like most of them that are out there, the problem is once you get sand, grit, dirt, mud, or whatever, you do the best you can to wash them out, but they don't quite work well. This thing here, you can fully disassemble. You can clean it. You can wash it. You can oil it, and you can reassemble it. Now, the little plastic pieces I was talking about, we know eventually the plastic pieces are going to snap. So... I have made sure that I have extra of those on stock uh, for sale. You can buy the uh, the large and the small one. They'll be as a set. And then the two collets, you have a large one and a small one. Now, those will be sold separately in case you just happen to lose a collet for some reason or you had the collet off and you stepped on it and you damaged it. You know, anything can happen. I don't have a lot of those, but I made sure I had some that I could, you know, somebody would be able to fix their thing. Uh, the last thing is the uh, the butt of it. We have made sure we put a swivel action back there. Uh, it comes with a lanyard already that you can lock onto your wrist, uh, but you can easily put like a carabiner on there and hook it to your uh, backpack. You could hook it to your belt loop or something like that. So basically closed, it is 21 inches, half open and locked in place, it's 33 inches, and fully open and locked into place, it's 44 inches. And then, of course, we made sure we had a hard rubber grip that has uh, some really uh, good knobs on it so that if the hand is wet or sweating or something out in the jungle, that it doesn't slip. You know, that sounds that really, is- really, really good, Tony, because you can actually take that, that it's easy, easy to carry and easy to have with you, so you can actually carry that with you all the time. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. 
Exactly. Uh, makes it very easy to carry and stuff like that. Now, the, the uh, metal twist collet, we made sure to make sure we had a really coarse, knobby type there because I've, I looked at the knurling and we tried different uh, um, courses of it and we just couldn't get to something that when my hand was wet, I couldn't twist it if the collet was tight. So we had to do something more like this uh, so that your hand would actually grab hold of it and be able to twist it and undo it or tighten it or whichever. So we have tried to uh, address every single issue I've ever heard about telescoping hooks. Yeah, well, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be like an awesome tool. An awesome tool, <laughs> Tony. Uh, we're actually joined by, uh, I think, Savannah and Jessica right now. So we'll see what these guys are doing. Uh, guys, we have Tony I'm just going over the new hook he has. So Yeah, it's awesome. I was actually looking at the pictures and the posts that you just posted, uh, uh, Tony. Um it's awesome to have you on here and talking about it. And that's, it's funny because I use a telescoping hook. It's just a cheapo one just from educational programs to teach the kids about it. But it would definitely be nice to have something that's actually functional. Because I can't imagine, like, really trying to use the one that I use for the programs. Like, I look at this thing and I'm like, really? The thing is so flimsy. I mean, it's ready to break with a hog nose on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's 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 definitely good. And good morning to you also. Thank you. Um, good morning. Uh, but if if you were following either my Facebook uh, for me or the Facebook for the company, I had posted a piece of metal with a piece of kind of a, a light green plastic piece on there, and and I put it out there and asked, you know, if anybody knew what this was, and a lot of people come up with different type of answers. Well to answer anybody that's listening and had seen that, that is my tool for actually inserting those little plastic pieces. Using your hand, I try to pop hundreds and hundreds of these things in, takes a wear and tear. So we made a little tool for each one of them. So that's what it is if you look on the purple, you'll see the light green and then the steel. Um, and that, that ah. really made a big difference for us, but it really threw a lot of people off trying to figure out what in the world that was. <laughs> so that's, yes, that's too. you know <laughs> I was, hey, you, you to be got, honest Tony got, I'm really super impressed yeah. with the price like I especially you know with uh with all of the materials that you use um you know being titanium metal and uh and all of that for 4850 that that is a really amazing price well now that is the uh introductory, introductory price it's only for a limited time and then it's going to go up from there and believe me when it goes up it's going to reflect the amount of material and time and wear and tear that i have in this thing at that point and people are going to be going oh crap i should have bought it back then and yep. there is a lot of people that placed an order last night for these hooks i am like wow i cannot believe so many people placed orders oh that's awesome well, I'll be oh, placing yeah, an but, order after yeah. this phone call, and we'll share the link, too, uh, so that people can go directly to you. They can look directly on your Facebook, or they can come check out uh, the Herpentine Radio link. We'll have a link for it, uh, because even just looking at it, I, I want to get it in my hands, because it just looks like it's so much more functional than the little the little chintzy thing that I'm holding right now. But, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. <laughs> Not a problem. So, yeah, it's... It's, uh, I, I tell you, I cannot believe that I finally have this thing completed. I, I was like a kid in the candy store once we got everything designed and, and decided to go with this part, that part. I mean, even the, the threading for the collets was a pain to, you know, too much, too little. Uh, all that has to do with it. And a lot of people don't even realize that. And, and how the inner uh, plastic pieces how we tried to put those in and then finally come up with this idea here was, you know, that, that, that took a lot of different testing because then you got to build something, you got to see if it fits, if it works. And so, oh yeah, I, I, I am just jumping up and down. Yeah. That's so exciting. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so what, Tony, what inspired you to, to do this? What kind of set you on this path? Um, uh, in doing, um, uh, 
building capture equipment? Yes. Well, this year makes 26 years I've been in this business. And I had uh, worked my way through the construction trade and had become an electrician. But as an electrician, I was always out of town. And I was getting tired of being out of town, eating out all the time in the hotels and stuff like this, being exhausted. So the last time I finished up a job, I come back, I looked for something in the area. And uh, firm and diversified which a lot of people may not recognize that name, or Fermont Hooks. Um, his place was about six miles from me, and they were looking for a, a shop hand. And uh, I applied for the job, and the gentleman that was the manager there uh, was an old salt dog from the Navy. He was a, a one of like eight chief master sergeants in the Navy at the time. And believe me, he is as salt dog as you can actually get. And uh, when I told him that my father always taught me that if you ain't 30 minutes early for the job, you're already late. The guy hired me. <laughs> that was it, right there. <laughs> because that's, that's the way he was. And he always seemed to show up about 30 minutes or 45 minutes early to make sure everything was set, the coffee pot was on, the lights were on, the machines were all up, and, and any other business that you needed to do. So I worked uh, uh, underneath him for a few years, and then he got tired of dealing with the owner. So he retired as the manager and just did the machining. And I took over as manager, and I was there uh, until 2002 when I left because of problems. And I, I have been on this path ever since. I'm, I'm not a person that works with the animals or anything else. I do love the animals and all, uh, but this is my way of giving back to the world, and this is also my mark on the world because I don't have any kids or anything else, so this is the only thing that people are going to remember me for after I'm gone. Oh, that's awesome. So it is your baby. So, I love it. Yes. This, 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 is, this is my baby, my child, or whatever, you know, <laughs> And uh, but I love dealing with the people. I love talking to them. I love going into the zoos. I love trying to make the products that they actually want. That's that's one of the biggest things is being able to listen to them and try to do it. Um, one of the other things that's not in the reptile world, uh, but I just finished up um, uh, Kirby's uh, eye covers, which fit like um, donkeys, mules, horses, giraffes, zebras, and stuff like that. Uh, so when they're moving them, they put this eye cover over them, and it keeps them from stressing out and, and being too nervous uh, so that they can actually deal with the animals. We have just finally finished it up um, because I do a lot in other parts. So, But I still have a list of 40, 50, 60 items that I would like to produce and come out with uh, over the years coming. That's exciting. And and that's if nobody uh, else comes up with any other ideas, like the one that just sent me, the one that he wants uh, a brace that will fit the arm and uh, uh, attach to the tongs so that you can pick stuff up very easily. Huh. Kind of, that's kind of that's like an engineering metal. mind that I definitely don't have. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, this, this, you know, this job here... I have to be an engineer, uh, manufacturer, uh, designer, um, and then, you know, uh, uh, be able to still scrub the toilets when it needs done. So <laughs> As a there, business there, owner there, is, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, there, there's so many different uh, hats that I wear here. It makes the days different all the time. And if I do get bored with something, there's always something to come back with and, and research for the materials or, or this or that. Uh, that. You know, even grips. You ain't believing how many different grips are out there or clips and stuff like this that I have looked at that, you know, uh, gotten in samples. Nope, that ain't going to work. Nope, that ain't going to work. That might work. I'll put this to the side. And you might have six other things that you've got to find to go along with this here. So it's it's a battle every single day for the new stuff. And I'm sure the relationships with the manufacturers is difficult to, to cultivate as well. Um, do you have manufacturers that you feel like you're, you trust that you buy from uh, more often, or do you just kind of look for what you're looking for and get it where you can? Uh, yes and no to that question. Um, 
when you don't have the item itself and not really sure what you're looking for and you go out and you do find it, some of them I do build a really good relationship with. Uh, others, uh, they may just have the item, but it needs to be built better or something like that. And you might look at somebody else that has something very close to what you're looking for now because you may not even really have a full idea of what you want because there are so many products out there. Like I said, when you look at like clips, there are so many different style clips and materials that they're made out of and, and how they are designed. It, it's unreal. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's almost like looking for a, um, a different size needle in the needle of haystack. <laughs> for sure. So, you know, there's, speaking there's of engineering, that. have you ever met? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm done. Go ahead. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just so excited. Uh, so have you ever met uh, Temple Grandin, speaking of engineering? <laughs> Who? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, you, oh, you um, sorry. Have you ever met Temple Grandin? Uh, have you ever heard of Temple Grandin? Me. No. So Temple Grandin, uh, my father was a cattle rancher. Um, Temple Grandin uh, was famous for her engineering mind. Uh, she's actually, I think, considered on the spectrum um, now, that's not saying anything about you, but uh, she grew up around um, farms, and she realized that the way that they would herd cattle into slaughter was really stressful for the cows. So she actually engineered the style um, corrals that they use that, like you say, use blinders so that they can't see. Uh, she even realized that the cows were startled by flags that were flying overhead nearby, so they kind of um, they re-engineered the whole way that they, they bring the, the, um, the cows in. But she actually, she says she thinks like animals. Um, the reason that she even got into it is because she could never handle physical touch. So one of the first things that she ever made was a machine that actually hugged her. So she would get into it and hug it. And they actually use a very similar method in a lot of livestock nowadays. So it's just, uh -huh. it's interesting to see how different people's mind works, you know, and, and how you can look at all these different, um, different, uh, obstacles and, and evaluate, you know, the different ways to, to go about, uh, you know, engineering and, and uh, fixing. So it's, it's just really interesting to hear the way you break things down and uh, work things out. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, uh, like her not wanting to be touched or touched, uh, everybody sees it in a different way. And nobody all sees it in the same way possible. My, uh, my lady Rhonda, uh, we can listen to the same conversation, look at the same thing, and we both always seem to come away with different opinions because she saw it and heard it this way. I saw it and heard it this way. So we end up having discussions about a lot of things uh, because other people do. They really do see it, uh, you know, not the same way as you do all the time. And you can't be right. I mean, and it doesn't matter uh, a person's skin color, their sex, their age or anything else like that, uh, people have some fantastic ideas. And, and you know, I, I watch about all these young kids that come up with these, these generators or special water pumps or doing this and doing that. I'm like, why can't I have brains like this kid right here? You know, they, they, they got the one 12 year old girl that's about to graduate uh, in four years and go to work for NASA. I don't have those type yeah. of brains. And I, 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 you know, I don't see and read the way that they do, and it's like, oh, my God, if, if, if I could just have half of that, the things that I might still be able to accomplish, <laughs> uh, because I, I am limited, and there, there's, there's a hell of a lot more smart people out there than I am. <laughs> oh. That's not true. See, there, I'm going to disagree with you, Sony, on that, because I'm looking at the snake hook going, I could never do that. I could never think of all that. And, you know, combat all of those issues and problems. So I definitely think that your brain, I think everybody's brain is just different. And, yes, some of them are just, like, expansive and explosive like that. But that's, like, I feel like that's another frequency. I don't know how, you know, it's, um, when you think on those kind of levels, it's actually sometimes hard to come back to reality because you, you kind of have to think so far outside the box. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate the compliment. But this hook has many, many, many brains that have worked on it and looked at my problems. 
it's not just mine. You know, other people have had major inputs in doing the different things. So I, I cannot take credit for building this thing all through my brain by itself. I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew when something actually would work, and I would accept it. Uh, but past that, you know, if I hadn't had help, I don't know if I could have actually manufactured this um, to the extent it is right now. Wow. Well, that's awesome to give credit where credit's due. And I think that that says oh. a lot, too, in general, is knowing when you need to reach out because we can't do everything ourselves. And that's the main, you know, the not the main thing. That's one of the coolest things about being humans is being able to collaborate. And, you know, like we couldn't do that. I couldn't do a show like this on my own. It's, it's so amazing to be able to come together with J.D. and Jessica. And it's so awesome to, you know, pick the brains of uh, so many amazing people and you know, you just learn more about yourself and the world around you. So I definitely think, like, you know, if we can get together, teamwork makes a huge – teamwork makes a dream work. What can I say? <laughs> uh, that, that, that is definitely true and stuff like that, you know. And, and I like what J.D.'s trying to do with the, uh, the turtles out there and everything else, which is one of the reasons I support him. So Because yes. I, I like that. Yeah, and, and that's something, you know, people will know that you, you did that uh, and, and helped there. And that's that's – Still another mark that I'm leaving on the world that, you know, hey, I helped over here, I helped there, and stuff. And you feel good about yourself when you're able to help in certain areas. Not everybody can help in the same way, whether it be, you know, uh, physical labor or cash or, or support of some type uh, can mean a whole lot. And I want to see JD, you know, uh, get that land and, and really do something with the uh, the turtles out there. I'm, I'm just hoping he... He does a home run with it. Hey, hey, Tony, I do oh. have an update for that, though, actually. Uh, oh, just a couple cool. weeks, Just a couple weeks ago, well, the people are letting me go on their land. They're having me survey and they're protected. They put signs up. And we actually found a hatching, a hatching wood turtle, which has been the first time in probably 20 years. So oh, wow, that's I mean, exciting. they actually, they actually, we actually found one there. So that is a great hope for that area, and you know, I hope they hope they do good. I'm gonna keep going there, and you know, they're gonna protect the land. They got some money from the state to keep it preserved how it is. Yeah. So I mean, you're just watching people, making sure people don't go in there and kind of catch them out of there. So. And they actually put cameras up. We put trail cams up around there and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we mon- monitor as much as we can, you know, so we can see what's going on. But just finding that one little hatchling, that is that is great hope. That's well, awesome. that's good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> it's, it's been a long time, but... <laughs> that's yeah, really awesome. Uh, Are you guys... Are you guys doing anything to track it? Did you mark it at all, or you just let it go and you're just trying to keep tabs on numbers that you see? We have the hatch one. We actually put a, it's kind of like a sticker, but it stays on there for a long time. Uh, but the older ones, we mark it through the fish commission, so they want the scoots marked. So you take a little file and put a little marks on each side of the suit on the, on the edge of the shell. So you don't really see it unless you know what you're looking for. And, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, but, and in that area, we probably have probably about 25 adult turtles in that area. But they're, the males wander quite a bit, so they come from different areas. So there's always, like, a new animal there. So, yeah, I mean, we just have to keep, keep it going because it's, like, the, it's the best place for them. It's an old beaver dam, so... They kind of like that habitat, and they'll stay there for as long as, you know, as long as the habitat's good. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, are you taking any photos and things like that that we can see, like, that you're posting? Because we definitely would love to follow that. That's an awesome story. Yeah, I got some photos of the hatchling and stuff, too. Uh had to be a little careful about the area. Uh, you know, make it so right? people really know where Yeah, you don't want to give it away? So. Yeah, so yeah, you have to be a little careful, mindful about that. So it's actually saving them. So, I mean, nobody actually would know by going past this place that this was even actually they're in there. 
But, uh, you know, it's just one of them areas that don't – there's a lot of trees, a lot of forests and stuff, too. So you, that's what you see first. So they just don't know about that area. I gotcha. Well, you'll have to take uh, Stoney's uh, telescoping snake hook out there next time you go out there. Oh, my God. Yeah, you, you got know a what? stump ripper. <laughs> I do have a stump ripper. And you know what? That thing is so in action, Stoney, and I do everything with that thing. You know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I've, I've seen the, uh, the the photos and stuff that you've you've sent and everything else, which is always nice to see, especially your girls playing with it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, Abigail has grown quite a bit, though. That, that's some birds, like, a tiny, so it's kind of like a little uh, t- uh, little hook for the like, little snake now. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. uh, what I was going to say, uh, what, what are you going to call this new do you have a name for those new uh, snake hooks? Uh, just a telescoping snake hook. Uh, you know, that is probably actually the hardest thing is trying to come up with a name for the different products. Oh, uh, you know what pops in my head right now? Eliminator. The eliminator. eliminator. Hook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's something. So, um, real quick, like, when is this um, this going to be posted for people to listen to? I will have it up today, Tony. So it will be on oh, YouTube okay. and all over the place. It actually goes right on Apple Podcast. It goes on Google Podcast. It goes on okay. Amazon Music. So Spotify. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, the so, the reason being is I, I wanted to. Uh, um, I was supposed to be at the Midwest Venom Conference in uh, uh, Missouri this coming weekend. Uh, There is that show, so if you're out and about, maybe you can go by the show there. Uh, They're going to have great talks and everything else like that. Uh, And, of course, my my friends got hooks. They're going to be there with uh, some great equipment of theirs themselves. Uh, there are a couple of really great guys also. I, I love being at a show with them. They're they're nice to talk to and and very friendly and very helpful. So if you're there, make sure you go see those guys or actually try to make it out to the Midwest Venom Conference. That's that's going to be a great show too. Awesome, that's awesome. And you'll have you'll have these. Are you um, you're placing orders or you'll have these available at the show? I'm not going to be at the show. I was supposed to go, but because of the COVID, oh, I, I decided to, to hold off. Uh, I'm looking at going to the uh, the Denver Ven- uh, uh, Venom Conference. Um, I think that is in October, August or October. I, I forget right now. I'm sorry, so many numbers in my head, but uh, I will be at that show there. The next show I will be at will be for the ZAA Conference, which is a zoo one, so – Everybody that's listening to this, unless you're actually one of those members, you probably won't even know about the show or even how to get in because it's rather costly to get into those. Gotcha. But I am taking uh, uh, the website. We'll take the orders right now and do your shipping. You can pay with your credit card. If you have any problems, uh, just give me a call, send me an email, and I'll be glad to take care of it. Awesome. Awesome. And what's about the turnaround time? So if I if I put the order in today, when do I expect to see my uh, my hook arrive? Uh, depending on what time today, uh, it may go out today. Uh, if not, it would go oh, out wow. Monday. Okay, wow, you're fast. Click on the draw then. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, right. we we try to have stock built. That's we we build stock, we run out, and while we're trying to build other stock, then we have to go back and start other stock. So I have a good problem here. Uh, but right now, I, I have a decent supply of these sitting there uh, uh, ready to go, tagged and all. Um, finished up the epoxy in, uh, a bunch of them. Last night, I did about 40 of the epoxy of hooks so they can be fully reassembled. So I have at least another 40 on top of what was already ready to go out. Oh, wow. Awesome. That's really awesome. But like, now, um, like I said, I was, I was shocked to see how many orders come in last night for these hooks. I'm really not. That the first thing I did when I pulled up that post is I stared at it for about 15 minutes and I really went over all the details and I reread it three and four different times. Um, 
you know, it's something that we definitely need. Like you say, that rotation is a huge deal with the telescoping. Yeah, um, that's, yeah. yeah that's what I was impressed with the rotation. That's awesome. Now, you will be impressed with the, uh, uh, the video that we did. Uh, like I was telling J.D. there at the beginning about being able to press down on a scale and send it past the 55 pounds, uh, that was something else there. Because if somebody tr wanted to use it for a walking stick or if they happened to use it for pinning, um, you know, it's it's there with that strength. Oh, that's awesome. That's good to know. Now, Jessica and I both have retail stores. Do you wholesale at all or you're just retail? I do wholesale. Um, it depends on if there is a wholesaler in that state or if you're just okay. wholesaling out of a store itself. Because uh, I won't Yeah, we both have allow, storefronts. Yeah. See, the thing is, I won't allow uh, uh, six different uh, wholesalers on the same, in the same town. I'm not like that. Gotcha. So basically, you know, if there's one wholesaler that's going to the shows in a state, you know, that's that's enough right there. No no sense in, you know, me making my money and cutting their throats. So I allow one person. Now if it was only at a store or something, that's another story. I would consider it and, and make sure that the one wholesaler uh does not mind it. It's not going to take from them. So Okay. Yeah, I would just be looking for our local clientele. We're kind of small and boutique, but I know that people are looking for it. And, you know, with COVID, like you're saying, a lot of people, especially, um, you know, some of our, our older clientele um, or, or, you know, immune compromised or things like that, they don't want to go to shows. So I know that they definitely need stuff like that. And I would definitely love to carry, um, you know, a high quality product such as yours. So um, yeah. maybe we can discuss it afterwards. Um, because I, I definitely like to, to see my clientele and customers, um, you know, have access to, well, not that they don't already, but have direct yeah. access to it and be able to, to touch it and being tangible. That'd be awesome. Um, and then what's your favorite? I mean, I know this is the newest and greatest is the telescoping, but you were talking about uh, the snake hook that uh, JD had. And um, and what what are the key benefits that to that uh, snake hook versus, uh, I guess, your more traditional uh, the Stump Ripper was originally designed by Richard Furman, and I guess he designed it back in the 60s, uh, and it has been around since then, uh, and that's who I learned how to make them from there, and I make them the exact same way, and it's, it's amazing to see some of his products from the 60s, 70s, and 80s that are still around, and maybe the only thing that has to be fixed is a grip that has dry rotted over the years. Uh, but wow. it is titanium. It's an aircraft thick-walled aluminum tubing that has been anodized. Um, if you watch the video that is uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, when I'm done and the grips are dried, I hook them on a rafter and I pull myself off the ground to make sure everything, you know, uh, the epoxy is good, uh, the grips are good, that there's no uh, defects maybe in the tubing because you just don't know about everything. You can look at it and not see a defect. It can be something just underneath the surface. So you want to check everything. Um, even the titanium, you want to make sure that when you bent it that uh, you didn't um, uh, cause problems at the bins and stuff like that, that the first time somebody goes to use it, you know, uh, to flip over an empty beer can and it snaps. So this is the way we test everything, and I've not had any problems. I've never had anybody ever even pull out one of my hooks before because of the type of uh, epoxy that I actually use. But that hook there is really great for ripping over uh, rocks or flipping over rocks and tin and plywood and stuff like that, which is what it's a, a directly designed to do. Okay. And of course, J.D. uses it to pull people up the side of mountains. <laughs> I haven't heard that story, JP. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, yeah, I, I pulled up the wool on Miller, which is probably, you probably about, I'm going to say, I'm going to be nice to him, about 230 in weight, and I was about 200 pounds, so both of our weight, I'm pushing, I'm pulling him up over this hill because he couldn't get up. So that, that is a famous uh, picture I have on there, and that, I guess, you know, it works, and I have used it for a lot of different other things. I pulled Abigail, my daughter, out, out of a creek with us. So and I know Tony, that's not really the purpose of the hook, so I don't really try to show that that much, but 
<laughs> it's a multi-use tool. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And see, like that there, I have a gentleman that's wanting me to build a um, uh, one of those specifically with a different type of hook for uh, um, uh, pulling things out of the bed of trucks. Because oh. he, he likes how the stump ripper is, but um, he, he gave me some great ideas about how it should be and everything else uh, because guys can't reach and then having clips so it would clip to the side there so that they could just pull it out and, you know, pull the battery or pull the, uh, the toolbox or, you know, the, the spare tire or the jack or something like that without having to climb up inside there. That Yeah, that talk about multi-tool, that's great. That's a great idea. So, um, yeah, and, if, and what are those priced at if we get them on your site? Um, uh, the stump rippers are $65. Uh, there is a left-handed one and a right-handed one. So it depends on which, which hand you actually use. And I have one guy that uses a left-handed one in his right hand when he is out um, uh, looking for uh, arrowheads and flint and stuff like that. He uses it to just... Uh, flip the little pieces. He's like, it works excellent when he's out looking for uh, the arrowheads. So you're saying I can use this to go get shells too when I go look for shark's teeth at the beach and shells? Okay. All right. I like it. Which, which, I think which, I, now, wait a minute. Which which town are we looking for the shark's teeth? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not in that great of a town. Um, I'm I'm in uh, Pinellas County, so um, I'm in Madeira Beach area, um, Indian Rock Beach. We find some small uh-huh. ones in Indian Rock Beach, no big ones, but I definitely want to hit up uh, more down south Florida and and go real uh, shark tooth hunting. I'm going to go to Peace River. That would be the great place to take that to is Peace River. Uh, what what was the town we went to? Venice, Florida, is a really good area for shark teeth. We yes, it is. We found a bunch of the little bitty ones, and I found one that was probably about two inches. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a really great area. Venice, right? Venice yeah, we're, kind of yeah uh, my in-laws live in Punta Gorda, so I think that's, like, closer down there. I think it's just a few hours away. Yeah. And, and they have, I understand, a really great uh, uh, Shark's Tooth Festival and stuff like that also. Now, I've never made the festival or anything else, but a lot of the people there get up uh, early, go walk the beach before work, and then after they get off work, they go walk the beach again. Oh, yeah. Wow. As soon that's, as there's a storm that's around, that's when I know I need to go to the beach. Like, has there been a storm? And, Let's go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, what washes up or gets uncovered and stuff like that. When we went, it had um, uh, it was right after one of the hurricanes that hit the Gulf and everything, and the beaches had this like a six foot wide section of seashells that ran the whole beach. It was just absolutely amazing. That's so where you find them. I'll give a tip to you guys. If you're ever looking for shark teeth, a lot of people don't realize this, but you're looking for that broken shell, like just like that line that you're talking about. And I always try to look for stuff that has more of the black speckling in it. And that when you see a bunch of those broken up shells and little black speckles, that's usually your, uh, that's your that's your zone. I know I uh, went with my kids and my husband, and we found like 20 on the beach that day. And there was a lady just walking near us going, where are you guys finding all these? She was next to us the whole time, and she never found one. So you have to make sure you're looking in those areas because they're not going to be in those sparse areas. They're going to be around all those uh, those crumbly shells. Exactly. Now, see, we couldn't find a single one until we were talking to one of the local people there. And he says, there's one right there. And he showed us, and it was a little bitty one. And he reached down and picked it up. And ever after he showed us what, how to look for what we were looking for, we started finding all kinds. But before that, yep, we couldn't find looking a for black one. triangles. I yep. think everybody thinks they're going to find a white tooth. You're like, no. You're looking That's for black triangles. The- yeah, that's over in the Carolinas for a lot of those. Uh, a lot of the dirt that's being brought over from uh, Morocco or something like that is what okay. they were saying is where a lot of that is coming from. Hey, I don't care if it's um, a black or a white one or a yellow or green or purple. You know, hey, I'm I'll just take excited any. to find something. 
Exactly. <laughs> you know, bones, uh, pottery, any of that stuff there. But well, uh, right, really close it. to where I live. Uh, they found it. It's right off the uh, the waterway. Um, the inner well, um, it's like probably like a mile from the beach. Uh, there was a kid. It's a park there. It's called Millennial Park. Kid was there with their family and uh, and looked and found a fossil. It ended up being of a, a giant woolly mammoth, and they found a giant sloth uh, fossil there too. And they didn't have enough. The the local college did some excavation there for a while, but then they just kind of ran out of funding. So I'm always wanting to like go out there and flip stuff over. So I'll definitely have to have to bring the hook with me and uh, look because I would love to find something like that. Oh yeah. Now if if you go to my website and uh, up at the top there is a link there that says videos. If you click on that, that'll take you to the YouTube channel. And you need to click on videos so it opens up all 51. Well, there are, now there will be almost 60 some videos once they're all done. Um, how yeah. the different equipment works and stuff like this, um, you know, whether it be the uh, the snake tubes or talking about the uh, polycarbonate type hooks or or the rock cliff hook. We did another one for it. That's really a great tool if anybody is out there that does uh, uh, animal rescues or animal control for being able to get up underneath mobile homes and houses and decks that you can't get under because that thing telescopes out 20 feet 9 inches. Um, oh, wow. Or if you have something that's, you know, like a rat snake up in the rafters or something that you got to get off or a chicken off the roof, you know, there's, there's just, it's a multi-type tool that a lot of people don't think they really need. But uh, a number of people always say, I got to use it this weekend or, you know, I had to do this or do that because I couldn't get underneath the place and was able to uh, show them that there was no snakes there or this, it's just a great one but you'll see all the different type videos and and explain about the different stuff so it gives a salesman right there and gives a really great idea of course a lot of people don't know uh being in the zoo and aquarium world i do uh specialized uh, uh custom nets in over 300,000 variations um specialized seal wow. nets for like noah and stuff for universities that's going on um but uh, uh, the enrichment side, uh, a lot I of people don't saw, realize. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm excited. I love enrichment stuff for reptiles. I, I have a couple and of a uh, snakes that are target trained and a t- couple of tapus yeah. that are target trained. So I was excited to see that on there. Yeah. And I was thinking it would be perfect for your stuff. boa gymnasium. <laughs> now, see, you're talking about uh, uh, the target enrichment, which is very important which, you know, being in that field has helped me. Uh, our tweezers have a rubber tip that is purple, and our nylon-jawed snake tongs are purple. And they are okay. like that for the specific reason that it doesn't look like any target colors. It doesn't look like any type of food that they would eat. And it also doesn't look like the inside of the mouth of a predator coming at them. So a lot of the animals are not messing with the tweezers trying to eat them or the tongs themselves. They're, they're being a lot more relaxed around these items because of the, uh, the color itself. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's huh. super interesting. So if, you, if awesome. you're trying to feed a, a tegu or something like this or, or anything, and it seems like it's trying to eat the tweezers too, does it have a red tip on there or, or a color that looks like possible food for them? Mm-hmm. Right, for sure. Yeah, and a lot of them do have that, like, default red red um, yeah. silicone tip. So I never thought about that. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's, exactly, and which is why, you know, even our, our tongs with the nylon jaws, which makes them really light with the solid rods in there, no cables, uh, that's the reason that we use that specific color is not because of it's pretty, because I do like purple, but because it doesn't <laughs> look like anything that they would need to mess with or something that is, uh, uh, you know, a, a danger to them themselves. Huh. That's a great idea. See, and that's why well, you do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, it comes from years in dealing with uh, enrichment. And um, uh, not dealing in enrichment, I would never have thought about that. Texture can be a big thing, too. Um, you know, it's, it's like our hydra snake tongs that we came out with with the interchangeable ones. 
we have found that the one with the banded jaws, which uses a surgical tubing, is absolutely phenomenal for grabbing centipedes. You grab a centipede, you hit the lock button, and you can set this across the corner of the table, and that centipede won't move. He'll grab hold of it and stays perfectly still. Really? Yes. There's the, the, the video for it is coming out also. But it, Ooh, I it is that absolutely video. phenomenal uh, uh, how they actually react to the, uh, that, that rubber touching them versus a pair of tweezers. They yeah, don't crash really. around. They or freak out. Else. Yes. I, I could not <laughs> believe it. Uh, uh, Roy from out at um, uh, the Oasis in Sanderson, Texas, he's the one that tried it one day uh, to grab a centipede for some people, and he just knew it was going to go berserk. And he grabbed it, and it didn't do anything. And he was able to put it in the bucket. And he told me, and wow. I spent years trying to find one so I could do it. Yeah, no, because they freak out. And to be honest, uh, feeding and moving centipedes um, has always been, you know, a displeasure of mine. I do not enjoy it because they're so fast. And they do. They just yeah. freak out. So that's really interesting that you guys found that out. And I'm sure, like you say, it wasn't intentional by any means. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, one of the other things is trying to stay away from the metal. Uh, Dr. Marie Rush, um, who was doing her tree boa research down in Granada, um, I had always told her about the polycarbonate being having a warmer feel temperature to it indoors versus the cold metal. And we always told people, grab a plastic spoon and a metal spoon, you know, touch your love handles, your ears, somewhere sensitive. You'll feel the difference between there. If you feel it, the snake feels it. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Marie Rush had one of the uh, uh, rock fit hooks that goes up 20 feet, 9 inches, and she come back, and she says she thought that there was more to the polycarbonate than just the warmth because she was in the jungle. It was the middle of the night. She says it's like 100 degrees out here. So that 10 to 12 degree different in temperature feel shouldn't have any effect to the snakes. But when they were using the old-style hook, in the two groups that had a metal one on it, when they touch the snake, it would climb higher. When they would use the uh, rock cliff hook that has a polycarbonate hook on it, the snakes would wrap around it and they could bring them down. So she thought that either they are getting electrical charge from the metal, they are tasting the metal, like if you're old enough from a chalkboard, if you put your hand on a chalkboard, you could taste it in your mouth. So they're tasting yeah. the metal, or that the uh, the texture of the metal is so foreign, it's like somebody scratching a chalkboard to the snakes. Or it might be something totally different, but how they react to the polycarbonate or plastics is a big difference than uh, uh, the metal itself. That is so interesting. Huh. That's really, really interesting. So well, that's, Jessica that's is our snake I... lady here, so she's definitely going to be... Yeah. Shopping after that after this phone call. <laughs> yeah, because I do have the only the only really snake that I I have to use a hook with regularly, um, and she seems to hate the hook. <laughs> and I I wonder if that's why. I know certain animals are sensitive to different types of metals. Dolphins are one of them. They're sensitive to the different types of metals, and I always thought that was because that um, something to do with the way that they um, communicate. With the echolocation, yeah. but maybe it's maybe it's something different. So that's really interesting. I never thought of it that it, way. It, it, it really is. Um, when we did the first uh, polycarbonate hook, which was the Gabuna hook for gaboons, uh, we did it for Stan Mays at the uh, Houston Zoo. He's the one that sent me down this path. Uh, and they had about a four-and-a-half-foot uh, female gaboon, and because of how the ribs were and everything else, when we did it, we took it down there, and they hooked her, and she laid across it and wrapped around herself like she had hooked onto it, and she stayed right there. They're like she's in no distress or anything else because the gaboon hook is three-quarter inches thick, which covers more of the ribs, so it doesn't put so much weight on uh, just one or two or actually between the ribs if the hook is too thin. So that's right. that's one of the big things. And I have talked about this over the years because – our hooks are set with a weight, and it's not a weight that the uh, uh, the hook would break going past. It's once you go past that weight, you're going to start causing problems and damages and hurting the snakes. So you need to go to the next size up to protect them 
not the hook or the equipment. I just absolutely love how you have the well-being of the animal, of the reptiles, because so many people, I think, don't really care about what's going to happen to the snake when they're doing it. They just don't feel compelled to to care. And I can tell just by by you talking, like, you have the animal well-being at the forefront of these products. So that's amazing to me. I just love that. Yeah, it, it, well, I, again, I appreciate the compliment and everything else, but it's it's the, the animal keepers that are telling me, you know, what they want it and why they want it and, and, you know, because there's not something that's protecting the animal itself. And they're the ones that tells me all the different uh, uh, features that they want or are looking at to go from there. And I'm following what they're telling me. You know, I'm, I might not have had the brains to think about the ribs and the damage that a hook would have done to the snakes, you know, because I never did before. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's really them. You're just implementing that, that policy, and I think that's amazing. I think that's such, a, such an awesome thing to do as someone who's creating the products, to really listen to that and provide those extra little comforts for the animals. You you want to know where I learn my little trick of listening to the people? Yes. <laughs> um, what is his uh, the the comedian that always says um, uh, the country one that says here's your sign? What is his name? Um, oh, uh, um, Jeff Foxworthy. Jeff Foxworthy. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and I I went to one of his uh, uh, shows one time. And he was like, you know, I don't have to think of these things up. He says, you know, people are always telling me the story. She's like, I got done with a show, and this couple comes up and tells me that they want to tell me about their brother having his nipple bit off by a beaver that had been in a ditch. He's like, you just can't make this stuff up. He says, people will tell you. So I listen, <laughs> you know, to the people telling me. That's, that's who I learned my little trick trick from with him <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so and and people do they really do have great ideas but may not know how to bring it forward or you know if they do they just can't make it professional enough or strong enough or this or that but that's what i'm around for uh to do all that work and the the lifting and to uh bring a different product uh, uh to surface it's it's kind of like the uh, the rack tool that we just come out with uh, for opening the real small tubs. I had somebody that says the, the one tool that was out there would not open these particular racks for him because they were so small. So we have designed some that come in the lengths of uh, 12, 16, and 20 inch. Uh, in the video, there's a big piece of steel, 4 by 4 that's about 12 inches long. This thing weighs 54 pounds. And I used the little uh, uh, rack tool to pull and pull that 54 pounds uh, across carpet, wow. um, which, you know, is, is something by itself because it's not a very big tool. It's very thin and everything, but it's still very strong. And we can also do custom links, but all because the one would not fit uh, the rack that he had. Wow. So, huh. see, all you have to do is listen to people, and, and they have some really great ideas. Uh, you know, it might be a book idea, it might be a song idea, it might be a poem idea that somebody has and just can't, you know, put everything in the right order, which is what I do with the equipment. Wow, it seems like a win-win for everybody on on, on that end for working with you because it's like we have our own personal engineer to figure everything out. <laughs> <laughs> and and you get the knowledge that you wouldn't actually, you know, have without that. So that's awesome. And I think that that is basically a testament, I think, you know, to what you're doing is, is proving that we can do it better. And, you know, it's kind of like magic. You know, a lot of times people ask me, well, why, you know, why does this work? And I'm, you know, I'm just from the background, you know, sometimes I don't want to know why it works. I just know that it works, you know, that that makes a huge difference. Um, I like to try to figure out and deduct things too. So like when you're talking about the metal snake hook, I'm almost wondering, you know, snakes use their Jacobson organ and they can sense chemicals a lot more. So if you're, Uh you know, testing and smelling, I can't imagine wanting to smell, like you say, metal right in my face. I mean, that doesn't sound like very appealing to me. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's never a good a, a never good sign when you say you taste metal in your mouth. So. <laughs> no, no, de- definitely not. <laughs> you definitely understand no. the deterrent of not wanting to be near a metal snake hook. But yeah, that that would have never even you know come into my thought process because I've just seen nothing but metal uh, snake hooks for so long. Yeah. And and the, the telescoping hook, I argued with myself about putting a polycarbonate hook on there, but most of these people are going to be in other countries uh, uh-huh. uh, doing their uh, their herping and everything else uh, with the vines and the limbs and everything like that. I just... I, I was worried too much uh, about the polycarbonate not being able to take the beating that the titanium would. So that's that's one gotcha. of the reasons we did not do the polycarbonate with it. But we, we had looked into it and thought about it. But if, if I would have done it, it would have had to be the half-inch uh, uh, polycarbonate that I would have put on there. But that would have made this, this hook so thick, you wouldn't have been able to get your hands on it. I got gotcha. you, um, for sure. Makes sense. Well, maybe you'll, you'll uh, engineer a tip for it later. A poly tip. <laughs> <laughs> See, there y'all are. You never know. A different <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, boy. I That's you, so I, I'm, cool. I'm glad I'm not near you two. You know, y'all, y'all be having me six different new ideas every single day. Are you done with this and but, you know, some people don't <laughs> I realize. Actually, like, I was just thinking, like, I don't know if you have ever thought of getting into this, but the products, I have salt, we do salt water at our store as well. And the coral, a lot of people don't like sticking their hand in the water. And one of these little grabbers, the ones that, or at least the ones that I've used have been so cheap. <laughs> and they're, they're really hard to get a good grab on the coral and move it if they fall over or if a fish knocks it over. Um, so yeah, I was just thinking. I wonder. I should talk to him about this. <laughs> See if he can come up well, with now, see <laughs> if you're if you're into the uh, uh, the aquatics, you need to yeah. look at my aquatic feeder. Okay. And it is it it is polycarbonate. It is very okay. uh, see through. It is perfect for feeding uh, anemones, uh, stonefish, uh, triggers, uh, uh, cuttlefish. Anything like that that you can actually skewer a small piece of shrimp and put it right there for feeding. Oh, I will definitely. And there's actually the, there's <laughs> there's a video on the YouTube channel and the guy is feeding the fish, but you can put it right to him. Comes in a four uh, uh, twenty four inch and a forty eight inch. Uh, oh, and nice. it's easy to put a little bend in it for an L so that you can put it and they're they're grabbing it straight off instead of it being straight. Because some people might only want a little one-inch L at the bottom, or they might want a right. three-inch L or something like this. So everybody can easily do it with a little bit of a, a heat from a lighter. Heat it up just a little bit. You can put your bin there with no problem. But this disappears in the water, so there's no heat sensor or anything like that. They're not seeing something uh, blue, red, or whatnot coming at them with food. Uh, and this way you put it right there. So, you know, if you have one that's a glutton, you can – you know, lure him away to another section and feed the other ones. Huh. That's awesome. Yeah, and then, of course, you also have the rock tickler to pull them out of uh, snakes out of cracks or run little spiders or lizards out of little cracks because it's very flexible. There's there's all kind of things out there. Well, just like you told us that you shouldn't be too close to us because we'll give you so many ideas. You've got us a shopping list a mile long right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And, and, and going back uh, to, like, the tweezers and stuff like that with the colors, uh, the, the ones that I carry, you know, we all get them. Everybody that's selling tweezers or, or hemostats and stuff like that, I'm sorry, but they're all coming out of Pakistan. But mm-hmm. there right. are dozens and dozens of companies that make them over there. And there is a different quality to them, and it makes a very big difference on the the bow that is put into a pair of tweezers that um, you don't have to be two inches from the tip to be able to squeeze hard enough to hold a piece of paper. So the ones that I actually right. carry have a, a good weight to them, but it's that specific bow. And what a person does is if you take where you're supposed to hold your hand, 
and you squeeze and you get your tips together, how much more can you squeeze between your two fingers before the, the metal actually touches? That's what you're looking for right there as if is it going to hold that mouse or that pinky or something like this or or whatnot, or is it just going to fall out because it just doesn't have the bow or you've got to be closer to the tip. And I right. have gone through sure. dozens of these companies until I found one that I like, and he is a pain in the keister to deal with because it takes forever for him to do anything. But it's because the guy makes the best stuff out there. That and, makes yes, a big I wholesale difference. them, too. <laughs> you are reading my mind. <laughs> Well, All right, well, Jessica and I are going to have to go shopping, and then we're going to have to get together with you on a wholesale list. Cause... <laughs> I, I, do ha- I do have a wholesale order page and stuff like that that I can send you that has the, the sale price and the wholesale price, and then you fill in how many you want and everything else like that. Awesome. awesome. Well, um, I, uh, Jessica and I both, we actually live on the opposite coast here in Florida, uh, but we both do educational programs in the school systems, and then – Jessica and her husband own shoe reptile shops that also feature uh, a lot of salt water um, and marine um, life. And then I particularly run a reptile shop um, with my uh, business partner here in um, the Seminole, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Tampa Bay area. Um, But we consider ourselves a boutique uh, store, and we really are looking for uh, that, that step above. And all of those features that you mentioned are definitely things that, you know, if, if you're starting it now, that's only going to further the advancement of all of this equipment. Yeah. So I definitely love, you know, just not just sticking to, to, you know, what's worked or what we thought has worked and really pushing the boundaries because, you know, technology is expanding everywhere. And that's one thing that we haven't seen much of is, um, is people really like re-engineering um, tools. You know, we've seen a lot in lighting and other equipment and, and the way we keep uh, them, but, Definitely, like you say, the feeding tools, the hooks and things like that. You know, we haven't, I personally haven't, um, haven't seen uh, that, that kind of eye for detail, um, like all the different features that you mentioned. So I'm yeah. definitely interested in, in, and would be really proud to be able to carry a product like that. So, you know, I hands down to you and all of the reptile and animal uh, keepers and, and, and everybody who works in those industries that have, uh, have led to, you know, the, having these uh, these things evolve. The new advances. Well, it is the 21st century, and material is changing. Uh, a lot of people are still locked on uh, metal is still so much stronger and better than uh, polymers or plastics or something like that, which just not the case anymore. But, you know, everybody for their own thing. Now, being into the uh, the aquatic world there, maybe she would like the last product that I actually made for uh, an aquarium. Ooh, y'all, ooh, what y'all know it? what it was? What? It was a 15-foot long set of snake tongs to feed sharks. Awesome. I think I saw that. And I, I was wondering, I was like, what is that going to be used for? I think I saw that on your Facebook page. <laughs> And I was it was an in, it was an what injured was shark. Yeah, they they had done surgery on the shark, and I guess for some reason it just won't come up. So they wanted to be able to get the food down to him. Oh, that's awesome! That's amazing. So, yeah, and it, it, it definitely something else. It took a while to do those, but yeah, I was able to do them, and uh, um, cracks me up having to make a pair of fifteen foot long snake tongs. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, well, I want to thank you so much for. Oh, sorry. I, I, I was going to say I do get a lot of uh, I get a lot of uh, people that want something custom built, which is one of the other things that I do in between breaths. That's great. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, like I said, we're going to post uh, a link to your Facebook, and then we'll post a link to your website, and that's where everybody can check out the videos that are uh, really informative and teach how to use everything and um, all the different process that went to, to engineering and designing. Um, it's really been a pleasure having you, and I'm so excited. Sorry, I was running a few minutes late. I had to drop my kids off at school, but I ran and got here as soon as possible, and I did make it kind of at the, the end when you were describing you know, that you can use the new telescoping um, snake hook, um, you know, uh, for, 
So you said five pounds of pressure, you said? Uh, well, not five, uh, 55 pounds of pressure. I take a scale and start pushing down until you get go past the 55 pounds. How much pressure? And, and do it with like a broom handle, not your hand. Gotcha. But just a regular yeah. scale and start pushing down and see how much it takes for you to get past 55 pounds. Gotcha. Wow. That's awesome. Well, I'm definitely uh, and, interested in everything. And, and sorry, go ahead. Uh, and no, I'm, I was done. Oh, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> no, I jump in there. You. I'm so sorry. Thank you very Not much. Not a problem. I, I appreciate y'all having me on here. We definitely appreciate it. Yeah, it was so nice will, talking to you. Y'all too. Y'all have a wonderful end. There, <laughs> Everybody's talking. I love it. <laughs> Scales and Tails Exotic Pet Store and Educational Center, now with two locations in Eustis and Daytona, Florida. A family-owned and operated local business providing captive-bred reptiles, feeders, saltwater fish, live coral, and friendly, knowledgeable service. <laughs>